nitrocellulose lacquers, in my experience, it's good because it's thin and it's hard. It's, uh, if it would be soft, it would be like putting a condom over the guitar. Like a, like a rubber layer that you have a nice responsive guitar that interacts with the strings and then you put a layer of rubber on it. And you can imagine what it does. It's no good. Um, and the funny thing is that nowadays, many of the nitro lacquers that are used by the guitar industry are, that's what they are. They are the most gummiest and tackiest type of lacquers ever available. Because nitro in the 50s, it was a, that was the only option. And the way it was done then, it's not possible to do, I mean, the environmental regulations don't allow anybody to do a lacquer like that. There is certain type of softeners in, in nitro lacquer that have been the original softeners, such as um, the oil of camphor tree that can't be used anymore. It's, it's protected. You can't put camphor oil into into a lacquer anymore. Lacquer manufacturers replace, have replaced this these uh, um, natural oils, softening the lacquer with um, plastics. And the difference is that. In the 50s or 40s, when, when you sprayed on, sprayed your uh, uh, tube radio or guitar or whatever with the nitro, there was the softener to avoid the lacquer from cracking. But you all know what happens to nitro lacquer that ages and, and starts to crack. It's because the components in the, in the, the softening components either vaporize away during time or, or harden and uh, causing the lacquer to, to crack. And in the musical instruments, it's the, the fact that the lacquer does get hard in the end, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, hardness is good for a finish. And, and another thing, ob as, as obvious, I feel, is the, the fact that you apply it thinly. Um, the thicker you put it, you do two things, two things to the guitar. You're again, you're you're putting there a layer of something that prevents your your uh, responsive guitar that you poured your heart and soul into. It prevents it from vibrating. And um, another thing is that you're adding to the mass of the guitar, so you're making a more more heavier guitar again by putting very much finish on it. <clears throat> and. Um, yeah, so in my perspective, I feel that uh, nitrocellulose can be good if it, it's not uh, soft and tacky, but also polyurethane finish can be as good if it's thin and hard. I mean, polyurethane is always hard, but the thing is, the challenge is to make polyurethane finish thin. It's possible. It's a bit tricky, but it's possible. Oh yeah, there's an x-ray. X-ray of this guitar. We have to do an x-ray, it's just cool. <laughs> to show what's inside. Is it so feeling better inside. now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The x-ray, um, we actually, we haven't, we, on, our, on our website we will have x-rays of all our guitar models. I think it's a, it's a good way of showing the construction of a guitar. In this case, it shows that this guitar is solid body guitar. There will be sound chambers, you would see it. And if we have a sound chambered guitar, you can see the way our sound chambers are made. So it's uh, education. Um, what makes you decide to put a sound chamber in or not put a sound chamber in your guitars? Well, it's, uh, it's going to be two different guitars. If, if, the, if it's a solid body guitar made to be sort of like in this, in this case, uh, a traditional Les Paul style solid body guitar. Um, it needs to be solid to have the right kind of attack and right kind of mids and right, you know, the, the way it, it's going to sound. When you add sound chambers, this is actually one of the things that Gibson does nowadays, that they add 
they make holes in, into their guitar to make it lighter. It's not really sound chambers, it's, it's, they call it weight relief. And they, they make holes in there and to remove mass of the guitar to kind of achieve the more comfortable playability for the guitar. And since there is the strong belief in the guitar forums and wherever on the internet, everywhere, that the old lighter weight Les Pauls were better. So Gibson makes lighter weight guitars nowadays by drilling holes into them. And and this again it alters the it doesn't make a guitar necessarily worse. It just makes it a bit different. When you make holes to a guitar, it's gonna sound different. The mix are gonna sound different and it's gonna the attack of the the string is gonna be different. If you think of extremes like Take and take a guitar like 335, Gibson 335, which is a, like a full semi-acoustic guitar, and the attack of that guitar is very different. It's like a kind of like a slower guitar. You can't really play certain style of things with it because it just isn't for that. It's just not there. The attack, so like solid, rock solid attack over a solid body guitar. Um, well, I mentioned to you that we, we, ma we, we made a, a video diary of, of the design process of this guitar. This is a, it's an interesting thing. We, I mean, usually the uh, design process of a guitar for a luthier, it's like, uh, usually it's, at, at least for me, it has always been something that you do behind closed curtains. You do it like, you don't tell about how, you, how, you, how you're, achieve what you achieve. And this time, this was sort of like a collaborative idea of Emma and I, and, uh, and as mentioned, it was part of my master's degree education or, or the, the studies, and uh, I wanted to show to the, to the board members my skills in, in one way or the other, and it felt like a good idea to make little videos of the whole design process, starting from empty paper, drafting board, um, and documenting everything. And uh, then we just stumbled upon that, well, okay, let's put them to YouTube. It's easy for the board to see there. And okay, it turned out to be like a huge thing for us, really. Uh, we've had, I don't know how many viewers we've had on, the, on these videos. Tens of thousands. Very much people have watched the videos and, uh, and um, so what happens in the videos, there's 15 episodes of guitar design, guitar uh, uh, building, where I tell about why I chose this wood material, why I did the neck joint like this, how I glue the neck and why I glue the neck like that, why I do the headstock like that. So, you know, I kind of go through every single detail of this guitar, why it's done the way it's done. And to prove a point, at the end of the process, we made a little tone fest. Uh, it's um, it was a collaboration with uh, with uh, friends of friends of ours, um, professional guitarists. We had one guy coming in to record with excellent recording equipment. Emma did the videotaping. Um, we had their great vintage amplifiers and uh, boutique amplifiers. And we had a few guitars. We wanted to do a little A-B test. What is this guitar about? I was really nervous about it because I knew that I would be getting there the only burstless Paul 59. That's like hundreds of thousands of dollars where the instrument nowadays, collector's piece. There's one of those in Finland, and I had that guitar with me at my home for two weeks. I had time to play it, and I, it was a wonderful experience.